So our topic today uh, is going to be the biblical case for Petrine primacy. And we have Peter's epistles. So Peter also wrote stuff. You know, he didn't just speak and give sermons and, and make decisions and have people die at his feet in the Acts of the Apostles. He also wrote some stuff, wrote part of the Bible. Uh, and his first letter of Peter is written to a lot more places than anyone else in the Bible writes to. This is verse 1 of First Peter. Chapter 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the exiles of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. If you get out a map, that's like everywhere in the Middle East. He's writing to a huge group of people who no one else who no one else wrote that much to. Like, that was the vast majority of the population of the church at that point. Yeah, it was like it was like all, all these different places. I mean, Galatia, just take this one as an example. Paul wrote a letter to the Galatians. And Paul wrote a letter to uh, other groups. He wrote one to the Corinthians. To they, they were individual things, though. And it was usually one letter to each and group. It was usually individual cities, usually yeah. like one city, not not all these regions. Yeah, Paul Peter, when he writes, he goes to people over here and over here and over and on a map. It's like wow, that's everywhere. He's writing to a whole big group. The, the only other apostle who comes close to the audience that Peter was in charge of is John in his book of Revelation. He has seven churches who he writes to all in one you know, book. Uh, he And they're all in uh, Asia Minor, um, just like what uh, Peter's writing to here. But th if you look on a map, Peter wrote to a whole lot more than even John did. He wrote to a lot more than seven cities. These are regions. And John most likely wrote Revelation after Peter was martyred. That's true. Yeah, but John apparently wrote it in like the 90s AD and Peter was dead by then. Um, John acts like an archbishop who is over a certain region of the church. Peter acts like a pope who's in charge of the whole thing. And this also shows up in 2 Peter, where he writes a letter, Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained a faith of equal standing with ours. So everyone. Uh, all Christians. All Christians, yeah. yeah. Uh, an epistle that goes to all the Christians. And, you know, and notice he doesn't, he doesn't go on to say... It, now, now, there's all these criterion for equal faith. If you're someone that has assented and and had the the faith, mm -hmm. like the the actual like you 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 are all, you have started your journey of faith, you're included in this letter. Yeah, you're one of the lambs. Yeah, as opposed to the sheep. But he's writing to them all, just like Jesus said, Tent, "Feed my sheep with you know the the word of God, tend my lambs with with the rod of iron." This is what G Peter is doing when he's writing to literally everyone in the church and exercising that leadership, which no one else does. The only other person that people bring up and say, you know, Peter's not the only one to write to a big group. James did too. James, you know, the letter of James. So let's look at that. Let's look and see what he wrote to. Verse 1, chapter 1 of James. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes in the dispersion. Greeting. The twelve tribes. That's not. A, that's not everyone. It's the Jewish it's, diaspora. Yeah, this is the the Jewish people, and he and he's talk, specifically it's Christians among them because in chapter two, verse one, uh, you who hold the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. He's talking to fellow Christians who happen to be among the twelve tribes, the the Jews, notice, Jewish Christians. Notice these are Peter, James. Well, not James the apostle, but it's Peter, James, and John. And who are the three people that Paul wrote about saying that they were reputed to be pillars and who he had to get approbation from? Yeah. He, Galatians he, he, chapter 2, verse 9, there were certain apostles who he says were reputed to be pillars. There was leadership among the apostles. Some were more important than others. Pete, Paul recognized that. Galatians 2, 9, some were pillars. Uh, Gal 2 Corinthians 11, there were super apostles. And uh, 2 Corinthians 12, 11 talks about that as well. And Peter was among them. He was he was one of these. He was one of the pillars, one of the super apostles, because he had the special role of confirming the whole brethren, which no one else had, uh, which shows up in Peter's letters. I thought the super apostles were a dissident group. I've never heard that before. Oh, anyway. I'll do some research. We'll get back to that next time. Uh, one more, a couple more things from Paul's letters, because uh, that's like all the rest of the Bible is either. <laughs> we've been through the Acts and Gospels and the rest of the New. We've been through some of the Old Testament. In the New Testament, we got the Acts, Gospels, Paul's letters, yeah. and the other letters. So we just, just, just a quick note: there. Paul is another person where people will say Paul had more primacy than Peter. Paul had to get the right hand of fellowship from Peter, and he said the reason he went up to Jerusalem with confer to confer with Peter, James, and John, and to get the right hand of fellowship from well, Peter yeah. was so that he would not preach his gospel in vain. Yeah, read the Book of Galatians. It's a really great way to learn about Peter's role. Um, 
because Paul talks about it too. Uh, so another example from Paul's letters. Uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 5, Can I not take along a sister with me, as does Peter and the apostles? Uh, Peter and the brothers of the Lord and the apostles. So notice he separates Peter here from the other apostles as if there's something special. You know, there's something about Peter that he says the apostles are one group in his mind and Peter is another. It's, it's really very, you might say this about someone who's a leader. You might be like, yeah, uh, it's the leader of the group and the group yeah. went, went to, you know, Cedar Point. Or Trump and his cabinet went, you yeah. know, yeah. et, et so the apostles and like Mark said earlier, Peter and his companions, they're like his cabinet. Um, okay, so another one, Peter. So In an analogous Paul, way, in a weak analogy. Right. According to Paul in his letters, Peter is a pillar of the church, Galatians 2.9. A super apostle, if, assuming I'm right about that being a positive thing, which I, maybe I'm not. Uh, we'll look at that for next time. Uh, he is distinct from the other apostles, 1 Corinthians 9.5. He also says that Jesus appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve, 1 Corinthians 15.5. Okay, so that's another indicator. Um, Jesus is uh, rising after after he's dead, and he appears first to Peter. That's a good mm -hmm. indicator that well, Peter's in charge. And here. there was a, a common refrain, almost like a, a tiny microcosm hymn, throughout mm -hmm. the tradition of the early church, especially the first five or six centuries, mm -hmm. where Christians a lot of times wouldn't just say, Christ is risen, truly he is risen. Many times they would say, Christ is risen, and he has appeared to Simon. And there's an, another there's very, something about Simon. There's another very early tradition in the church, both east and west, that uh, an antiphon that says, "God is the Lord, and He revealed Himself to us. Blessed is He who comes in the name of the Lord." There, there's something about the way Peter, Paul phrased this. He appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. Like once again, there's distinct groups. Peter is, uh, in Paul's mind, the twelve is a, is one group, and Peter's another because. Uh, at least I think it's because he recognizes that, that they're like the cabinet to Peter's presidency, in a weak analogy. Uh, okay, one, a couple things, though. Peter's the pillar. He's, a, he's a, distinct from the other apostles. Paul conferred with him for 15 days after his conversion in Galatians 1.18. That's a big deal. Like, I'm going to convert. i got to go get the right mm -hmm. end of fellowship. I'm going to go see Peter. Galatians 1.18, he talks about that. And he's so much more important than James... Not that James is unimportant, but Peter's so much more important than him that he almost doesn't count James when he talks about what apostles he saw when he was in Jerusalem. Oh, yeah, by the way, James was there too. Yeah, yeah. Galatians 1.19, Paul, Paul's like, I went up to see the apostles, and all I saw was Peter for 15 days. Well, I also saw James. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like saying, I had an audience with Pope Francis. Oh, and by the way, I ran into Cardinal Sarah while I was in Rome too. Right, it clearly indicates who's most important here and that's what Paul does so there's evidence throughout the New Testament throughout even the Old Testament prophecy that they were going to have someone in charge of the church uh, that it's going to be Peter at, in the initial time and that he's going to have successors and and this this, this continues throughout down for 2,000 years of Christian history where whenever anybody wanted to missionize or evangelize a completely new region mm -hmm. or expand the territory of the church in a big way, confer with Peter. They had to confer with the papacy mm -hmm. to 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 be. I mean, even 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 it saints. It happened with England. It even, happened with uh, Methodius and Cyril. Yeah, 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 Cyril and Methodius, mm -hmm. which are highly venerated by the Russian Orthodox and and the Romanians of Bulgaria by the Slavic peoples. They're like, we want to go to Bulgaria. Go to Rome first. <laughs> yeah, uh, it well, happened they, with Patrick they, in Ireland. He they, went to Rome before he went to Ireland. Well, they 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 were first commissioned by Constantinople, but then Constantinople was like, oh well, make sure you get Rome's approval too. Yeah, yeah. So they, it was recognized that you, like Paul, you confer with Peter and you make sure that the message you're preaching lines up with uh, what you know what we're supposed to be preaching. So there is someone in charge of God's church. The Bible teaches this very clearly. And as we just started to get into, tune in for next time where we'll talk a little bit about the history, the historical case for Petrine Primacy here on Mid-Ohio Apologetics. Any final words, Brad? God is the Lord and he appeared to Simon. Amen. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Hey, this clip was taken from the full show, which you can listen to at historyandapologetics.com or at our YouTube channel, History and Apologetics.